Hey guys, before we start with the next dev vlog, I just wanted to give the sincerest of thank yous to all of you who watched my video. I never anticipated getting this many views, like as of this recording I'm sitting at around 200 views. I know for some people this, <laughs> this doesn't sound like much, but for me, like having no reach whatsoever, I, I maybe thought I'd get like 12 views on the video and not like be in the hundreds. So I'm really, really glad how it all turned out. Um, yeah, so thank you so much and let's get on with the devlog. So after the first devlog, I really wanted to get some more planning done. Yes, I know, planning again, but I believe me, it's important. So I created this Trello board, uh, which just helps you keep track of all your tasks when working on a project. I really recommend it. Hashtag not sponsored again. <laughs> um, I created a few uh, like lanes with new, work in progress and done and started filling it up with a lot of stuff I wanted to get done. It's not complete as of now, but we're getting there. So I color coded everything with green for graphics, orange for um, like coding stuff and blue for overall things like finding a name for my game, which I still haven't done. So if you have any suggestions. <laughs> type them out in the comments below and so because once you really start planning and like writing down the actual tasks it's so much easier to to get stuff done because you can even like inside of these cards you can even get down into more details like for my graphics for the first level of the farmlands I just um, defined like all the sprites for I want for the environment like the dirt ground, the barrels, crates, fence and stuff. If you just like jump head in first, um, head first in, you know what I mean, and like start spriting stuff together, there's no end to it. Like you, you just get lost in, in making sprite after sprite. So planning it out like the actual sprites you want to add is very important and very helpful. You can in the end add more stuff if you like, but getting down the basics is is a lot easier this way in my opinion. So the thing I wanted to start with was UI graphics. Because the UI is a huge chunk um, of, of the game's visuals because like most of the time while playing you have you will have the AI, uh, the UI um, on screen. So it's really important to get down just right. And if you look at examples of older games, like of actual Game Boy games, um, they like have this dedicated space for the UI, which like completely occupies a part of the screen. If you look at modern games, they do a lot of um, like overlaying UI elements to the point where it's almost a meme in, in big tiles like Call of Duty. But even simpler platformers, 2D platformers, um, have these UI elements integrated in the screen or overlaying just the whole, whole level screen. Um, but if you have only this small resolution and only four colors, it can really be distracting and you can get confused what's um, like lever architecture and what's UI element so uh, I decided to go down the same route as these um, these classic games on the actual Game Boy did so but before getting into just like um, drawing away I wanted to get some key data right because before drawing the AI, you actually need to know what you need to have displayed as an AI, uh, UI. Do I keep saying AI? Maybe AI is taking over, at least my speech patterns. All right, so for health, I want, to be a, I want there to be a maximum of three health points. I want there to be three big collectibles per level, like the green stars in the Super Mario World series or in Super Mario World and Super Mario Land uh, which like you have to explore and find these secret hidden areas to get and 
and then I want smaller um, collectibles, but I at first didn't know how I want to handle it, if I want to have like a total of 100 and you need to find it, all of them. But then I remembered one of my favorite games of all time, which is Rayman Origins, and how this game handled it. And it just had this, uh, like, if you're not familiar, you don't have to collect all the small collectibles, lumps in this, in this case, you don't have to collect all of them. There's a lot of them in the level, but you have to get a minimum of 100 or 150 to get the last big collectible, like in this case the Alec Tune Cages. And I really like this approach because you, you don't have to collect every last collectible in the level. You can miss some if you like miss time a jump or anything. Um, but it really encourages you to still keep exploring and to try to get as many as you can. And this system I really really like so I just decided to have the same thing in my games to, to have these three big collectibles scattered around and if you collect a minimum of 100 of the smaller collectibles you get like the fourth collectible um, yeah so that's the system I want to to aim for so a few last um, key data things I want to get down is that I don't want a timer which a lot of old games had um, but I, I hate timers in games like I want to explore I want to goof around with the mechanics uh, and a timer always felt like a hindrance in my opinion and also lives just a relic of times past I really don't like live system and it's my game so I won't include it all right and now I know what I want for my UI. So I started drawing it. I came up with this little bar, uh, which happened to be 10 pixels high, um, because I, I felt like eight pixels was just not high enough. I didn't have enough space for all the details, but 16 pixels, like double of that, like two sprite heights of the Game Boy, just was too, too big. So I settled with 10 pixels, which is not ideal for the true to Game Boy thingy, but I think it's fine. So I then decided to divide this into three chunks, like the health portion, the portion for indicating what big collectibles you collected, and then for the smaller ones. So always keep track of these three things. I then drew, or better copied from the sprite this little <laughs> pig head which gave the UI element a lot of personality in my opinion and added the um, health chunks or the health bubbles to it. I kept it simple but readable which I really like. For the collectibles I drew up this X symbol and because if you remember the story is that you get mutated like you're this pig that gets mutated by this chemical your farmer feeds you so i wanted the, the collectible to be more of these chemical x tanks which will be labeled with the huge x so you can make the connection to the collectible and for the smaller ones i came up with this little vial looking thing like this meter um filling up until you get like the last X symbol and yeah I really like how it turned out if I overlay it with the with a screenshot of like the game like the little test room I came up with I I think it's it stands out enough but it's not distracting so I really like how it turned out all right for the X symbol for the collectibles and the health bubble symbol I simply chose to have this two-part sprite, which I alternate um, yeah, in regards to how many collectibles you collected or how many health you have left. But for the bar, I had some more thinking to do because I didn't want to just draw the, the little um, vial thing in every possible state and loop through it. I mean, I could have done it, but work smart, not hard, right? So I came up with a different solution. So I just have this 
as an overlay like the, the dark outlines and the highlight of the vial so it looks like kind of glassy and I will then just display a colored rectangle underneath um, this overlay which like moves more to the right the more collectibles you collect which gives this cool like filling up this vial with a chemical kind of kind of look which I really liked so I decided to um, to go with it and started coding so I created this um, uh, game object for this collecting for this bar UI element and defined a variable for how many um, collectibles you already collected and for testing sake I just want to increase it by one every time I press the alt key and I want, then wanted to draw itself on top of everything and draw the like the colored bar underneath it um, for the width of the bar I counted the actual three pixels in the in the UI elements graphic and it turned out to be 30 so I just divide 30 by 100 to get like the percentage of it and multiply it by the number of collected um, collectibles I then also multiply it by 4 because as you remember I scale everything by 4 to have more pixels than, than the actual sprite pixels to make things smoother so I have to keep this in mind then I added these um, these little debug messages as well so yeah let's see how it turns out and for the most part for the most part it looks okay but the thing I immediately notice it that the color just is not right I even went ahead and like had implemented this little color sheet with the hexagonal codes, the hex codes for the colors of my, my Game Boy sprites. Um, but using this hexagonal um, thing, just like the actual color, it somehow displayed it falsely and I don't know why. And I can't figure it out and I couldn't figure it out. Um, so I just went ahead and like defined the colors um, as global colors or as global variables in GameMaker. So just have it as color one, two, three, and four. So I won't run into the same problem again. I just have the RGB value saved in these global variables, which I can then implement um, into the actual um, yeah, code. And let's see how this turns out. All right, the color seems to be correct now. <laughs> so RGB works, hex codes don't work. Don't ask me why, but now it looks great. But it still has this jittery movement because it moves not in the like in the intended pixel size of four pixels each but has this like like steps in between which just doesn't look right so what I ended up doing is just round down the value that this little equation turns out um, so it only ever increases by one of like pixel sprite pixel or four of the actual pixels once it's actually like rounded down a whole number if it makes sense I included this little debug message for this as well and let's see how if it works now and it seems to work just right so you see the actual um, the actual um, divided number of the 30 pixels and then the rounded down version which yeah makes it clear what I try to explain right now but failed miserably all right to test it even further I um, drew up this small little dummy collectible um, 
which is just this dark circle and gave it a little bit of code just if it collides with the uh, with the player object it increases the variable for the how many collectibles you've collected by one and it destroys itself so now time for the final test and it works <laughs> looks good so with that we are at the end of this devlog again thank you so much for watching uh, if you like it and want to see where things go consider subscribing consider leaving a like and if you have any constructive criticism or anything like that or just want to say hi just drop down into the comment section and i'll see you in the next one bye bye